that was an exciting introduction. Why was it so exciting? Because this is a fun, exciting, playful soap. I have here already the oils ready to go. I'm going to show you my temperatures. 79.7 Fahrenheit was my oils. And now let's check out the lye water. This is a confetti soap. So I showed you the shots in the beginning were my confetti, which is just some old soaps, 67 Fahrenheit on my lye water. I have put this out on the deck to cool. Here's some balls I'm going to put on the top. And that confetti was made using a cheese grater. I just grated all that up. So I'll speed this up and turn on some music and I'll get back to the details again later. Have fun watching. So I am ready now to add the confetti. See, I'm just randomly adding little bits there. And I discovered at this point I had a bit of extra batter. This is my first time ever making a confetti soap. So I didn't know really how much soap this would make. You'll see I end up making two extra little bars. Um, just a tip for getting out of those containers after a few days, I put them in the freezer and then the, the soap just pops out really nice. That's a pretty mold with some flowers on it. So I'm just kind of layering it. I do batter, a bit of confetti, some more batter. Um, I ended up filling two of those full. Um, you might see four there, but I ended up emptying two and putting it in with the main loaf. So I'm just patting it down with my spatula. So get in there, you get in there, behave. Uh, those ones I end up adding to the main area. Smoothing it out. Now this has a strawberry fragrance. Not too much, just a little bit of strawberry. So I got the top. You know, just smooth. I didn't do any piping or anything extra and just experimenting with what to do with my leftover soaps. I suppose we could just use the leftover soaps as they are, but I find this more fun. So now I've got it nice and smooth. I'm finished adding confetti now at this point. And then you'll see I'm going to put on some soap balls on top just for fun. Um, they're totally random. So there, <laughs> this is where I decided to put those two in with the main batter. Now my soap ball placement, I admit, is terrible. Um, it's not terrible. It's creative. It's totally random. Uh, this is a soap just for us to use at home, so I wasn't concerned with things being all matchy-matchy and lining up. It was just me having fun with soap. So, I, not every soap we make has to be um, for sale or, you know, we also make soap for ourselves. So enjoy the rest.
everybody it is Saturday afternoon and here I have the confetti soap I made show it to you now it is uh, you know a little bit crazy but this is a soap just for me and Aaron um, it's a, I'm gonna correct that this is a soap for Aaron to use <laughs> so it's just a soap we're gonna use in our home it, you know it's just a fun soap so if it bothers you that, you know, for some reason I have some random strawberries here and I use blue glitter, orange glitter, white glitter, um, I'm sorry. It's just, it's our soap. It's just a fun soap. My goal is, my ultimate goal is to take all the extra soaps we have um, in, our, in our soap room and I'm going to confetti them all. Like... I'm going to take the cheese grater, you know, super clean. It's been through the dishwasher. It's clean. There's no cheese remnants on it. And I'm going to grate it all, which is all I did with this one. And I'm going to then put them in some plastic bags, snip some holes in them so you've got airflow so they don't rot. You know, there's no preservatives in homemade soap which is why it's so wonderful and this time I'm just gonna use my regular old miter box and I think my cutter yep see it fits here's the round edge you're good uh, anyway I'm just I'm gonna get all the old soaps out of the way so I can be more organized and just have new soaps out for example last year I sold all but one Oh, this is pretty. Look how pretty that is. I sold all but one apple cider soap. So what am I supposed to do with the apple cider soap? I've got one left. And I'll give it a sample. Or And that's not just that soap. I have, I had two candy canes left, one apple cider. Um, just random soaps like that. Um, I don't want to give them as a sample because I'm not going to make any more until Christmas. So... Why am I advertising my apple cider soap when I'm not going to make it? Right. So they're just sitting there and I know I could sell them next year, but then they'll be a little bit different than next year's batch. I've obviously thought too much about this. So this is kind of neat. See the ball placement wasn't perfect. It's going to be okay. It's fine. Um, I'm not making fun of people who I, I have my own OCD issues, more in home decor. Like if you have something hanging and it's crooked, when you go to use a washroom, I'm going to straighten it. Stuff like that. Um, but, and I absolutely, I can't stand poor painting jobs. If you paint it and you got a little bit of paint on the ceiling, I'll just stare at it. So right now, my poor dear husband, Aaron, has a lifetime supply of Christmas tree smelling soap. And, you know, that's not really fair. So I'm going to take all that, uh, everything, it's going to become confetti. And once in a while, I'm going to make him some soaps like this. Like this, These are strawberries. These are so wonderful. I can feel them. They're really, really creamy, really nice. They smell really good. I really like the the bright, bright orange. Pink is from the candy cane soap. That's nice. You don't smell the confetti. Like the confetti did have some smell. Uh, you don't smell it in this. So anyhow, what happened to my plans to make melt and pour? We're going to do that next week. So I will share with you our creations. What I'm with my little sister. Aaron and I made some, I'm just going to grab it here, Aaron and I made some melt and pour last night, and these are the cutest things we made, we were just having a good fun Friday night, Friday nights, a night we both have off work, so macaroons, they're so cute, so I think I'll just gift these to someone for um, Easter. A group of these in a row I made pink, yellow, purple, and green. 
so aren't they cute? I'll make sure they realize that these are soap. It wouldn't harm someone to bite into it, especially if they've been saying naughty things, which almost everyone does every day. Anyhow, including me. My little sister, um, I'm in the Big Sister Little Sister program, and that is new for me. I just started that this year, and she went into the city today, so we will have our soap fun next week. Um, when that, going into the city means going to Edmonton. So we're in Cold Lake. Edmonton is two and a half hours away. And if you can get yourself to Edmonton, all of a sudden there's all this world of fun and shopping. So if she had an opportunity to go, I say, you go have fun, girl. Go have fun. We'll get back to this next week. And you can tell me all about your trip to the city. And I have mixed up already. What I was going to do was, and I'll do it again next week, mix up the oils and the lye water ahead of time. And um, I have, of course, her PPE here and Master Apron, and she will just stand, you know, three feet away and watch me make a cold process soap. We'll do that next week. Anyhow, so I've mixed up the oil and lye already. So this afternoon, I'm going to make my lime margarita soap. I have here my limes getting ready. I put sparkle in them. Are they ready to come out? Your one's ready to come out. They're... Oh, it's so sparkly. I put a touch of lemon in them. I usually don't put any fragrance in my embeds, but I did this time. And then <laughs> I'm working on my flip-flops. Here's my little flip-flop mold. Oh, they're cute. I decided to make purple. They look, these look pink. I need to add some more color to my mix. Because I thought green, uh, the margarita soap is going to be just plain green, white piping, and purple and yellow flip-flops. Um, it seems some of them will be pink. Unless I decide to not use these first ones. That's today's fun. So I decided, um, I've been thinking for years about having a little sister because um, I don't have any kids and I teach art to kids, which I absolutely love. And yeah, I just don't have enough young people in my life. You know, I don't have any, my niece and nephews live far away and there's no babies in our family, no, no toddlers or kids or there's uh, children at church which I absolutely love 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 it's like children can sense when adults need their attention they come and hug you and hang out with you kids are intuitive so I decided this year to just go for it and see how it would be being a big sister which is a mentor if you haven't heard of the program I'm a mentor to a girl that is almost 11. She's awesome and creative and brilliant and tons of fun to hang out with. And what I do is every week we agree together on a fun activity to do. It's, you know, it takes usually an hour, 90 minutes to go do something fun. We try to find things that are free. Uh, you know, we're not doing terribly expensive things. So far, I haven't spent a penny, actually. <laughs> we went to an event last weekend, and I brought money prepared to buy hot chocolate and s'mores, and everything was free. So I was like, hey, sweet. Yeah, I've not spent a penny, and I have had a ton of fun. And it is just nice to get perspective from young people. You know, learn what dubstep means, for example arts and movies and stuff that they're into. I don't want to become an old fart ahead of my time. Keep yourself young. Have fun. We got some, some exercise. Get out. Do stuff. So when I decided to do this, 
I searched for reviews or something from other big brothers or big sisters, and I couldn't find anything. So it really was just a leap of faith. I couldn't find anyone saying, you know, of course, they were the ones that the program had made, which, you know, were, of course, they're all positive. So, um, and it is uh, something I am glad that I made this decision to do. And I highly recommend to anyone else out there like me who has some extra time and has, is a kid at heart. It doesn't matter what age you are. You need to be an adult. And uh, I also thought that maybe, you know, maybe I'm not, don't have much to offer, you know? But when you really think about yourself, you are unique in your experiences. And take a look at your life. You do all kinds of cool things that no one else does. Um, for example, I'm just learning crochet now. So all those crocheters out there, I really respect you because it is tough. I'm on my half double crochet I'm learning. And um, the most difficult part about it for me is seeing I keep splitting the wool and pulling it through, and I, I most, <laughs> most difficult part for me is figuring out which wool strand is the one I'm supposed to still be working with. You know, sometimes I think I leave behind the one I'm supposed to have, and then I can't find it, and I just pull it all apart and start over. But it's practice with time, we'll learn and get better. That's what it's all about. And I haven't been showing these to you much. There they all are. Very cute. So anyone who was upset about the placement of my balls, you can see here that, you know what, in the end it all turned out okay. It's going to be all right. So, you know, the good thing is now Aaron has something to use in the shower that doesn't smell like a Christmas tree. So I think every month I will make him a confetti soap like this. No more Christmas tree for Aaron. That's just not fair. Okay, so next um, I'll be doing... My margarita lime, finally. That's the one where I'm going to use the vanilla stabilizer because that fragrance oil discolors. It's just going to be a nice pretty green. And I'm also going to be doing some painting. So I'll show you some portraits that I'm working on. All right, take care, everyone. Thanks for watching. See you later. Well, if you've made it to the end of the video, you get a secret treat. I forgot to unmold these. So these have been, I left them for three days, just like the loaf, to harden a bit. And then they've been in the freezer for four hours. This is actually cold. And I just loosen the mold and give it a bit of a tap on the top. If you don't do that with cold process, sometimes you leave behind a bit of soap in there. You don't get the details of the mold like you would so easily with melt and pour. So that might still happen to me anyway. We'll see. It's looking good so far. There we go. Oh, it's very pretty. So here's a nice little soap that I will probably give to someone as a present. Same thing this one, so just gently with the edges. Bit of pressure on the top. Pops right out. 